just off Fifth Avenue, on a site long occupied by the old-fashioned townhouse of the Rockefeller family, stands the new-fashioned home of a nationally important institution, the New York Museum of Modern Art. No dusty storehouse for old masters, this museum is an up-to-date showroom for the art of our time. Painting and sculpture, architecture and still photography, and the motion picture. For years, the curators and directors of the museum's film library have been gathering together a vast and significant collection of motion picture films. Milestones marking the progress of the youngest and liveliest of the arts. Here, preserved for all time, are old negatives through which the people and the customs of an age long past will live forever. And in the museum's vault is the accepted ancestor of today's vast movie industry, a 10-minute film, The Great Train Robbery. Produced in 1903 for Thomas Edison, this was man's first attempt to tell a connected story through his newly discovered medium, the motion picture. a few decades after the great train robbery, the art of telling stories with camera and film has become one of the nation's greatest industries, with a capital investment of billions of dollars. Each production is a highly speculative venture, for its story, its direction and its cast must please the ever-changing tastes of those who support the industry, an army of 70 million U.S. moviegoers every week. International capital of the motion picture is a fabulously press-agented suburb of Los Angeles, Hollywood, a community whose name alone is a magic word throughout the world. But in Hollywood, where the vast majority of all films is produced, the making of movies is a serious and complicated business. Among the movie industry's 50,000 employees are men and women from nearly 300 trades and professions. Nowhere in the world are there craftsmen who take more pains. For in the making of a picture, carelessness in one single detail can mar the combined work of the hundreds whose talents go toward the making of a scene. Today, big time movie making requires weeks and months of tireless research and preparation before a camera turns a single foot of film. And a big slice of every Hollywood producer's budget must go for the studio sets, which serve as background and atmosphere for his story. For the great movie public, becoming more and more observant, demands scrupulous historical accuracy and strictest attention to minute details. Every studio has its own museum. Immense warehouses crammed with furniture and fittings. Props from every nation in the world, from every period in history. Such elaborate attention to technical details has helped to make movie production prodigally expensive. On the fabulously successful Gone with the Wind, David Selznick spent some four million dollars. And today, a million dollar budget is regarded as modest for a grade A feature. In its collection of books and original documents on the movies, the largest library of its kind in the world, the Museum of Modern Art's film research staff has amassed a living encyclopedia of the cinema. Being added daily to this collection is important source material pertaining to a young art whose entire history has been made within a few decades. But far more vividly than in any printed book, the museum is already teaching the history of the movies to the public through its educational programs of important films of the past, today being widely circulated to U.S. colleges and museums. In New York City, the museum has its own theater, showing programs designed to trace the progress of the motion picture since the days of its crude beginnings. In 1896, the first moving pictures projected on public screens were plotless incidents, but a minute long, that amazed and scandalized their audiences.
16 years later, in 1912, the moving picture had begun to tell simple stories. In many of them, Mary Pickford was the heroine, Lionel Barrymore her leading man. By 1914, the screen had begun to develop characteristic forms. The serial thriller and the westerns whose greatest star was William S. Hart. In 1914, William Fox presented the world with the great movie vamp, Theda Barra, whose exotic screen romances indicated the growing sophistication of the movies. Throughout the early teens, in Max Sennett's Keystone comedies, the immensely popular art of slapstick was undergoing uproarious development. In 1914, a famed stage actress, Marie Dressler, making her screen debut, had an obscure London comedian, Charlie Chaplin, as her leading man in Max Sennett's first feature-length comedy, Tilly's Punctured Romance. Almost overnight, the public discovered in Chaplin a consummate artist of slapstick and made him the most popular and highly paid comedian the world has ever known. The year 1915 is one well marked in motion picture history, for it was in this year that David Wark Griffith released his mighty spectacle, The Birth of a Nation. The most important single picture ever produced, it was the turning point at which the movies began to demand consideration as an art. In 1921, Rex Ingram's Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse launched Rudolph Valentino, the greatest romantic idol of the screen's history, on his short and brilliant career. By 1922, comedian acrobat Douglas Fairbanks was at the height of his fabulous popularity. In 
1925, with The Big Parade, produced by Irving Thalberg and directed by King Vidor, the silent motion picture reached a new peak of dramatic power. The year 1927 brought to a close the era of the silent film and the years in which, unrestricted by any language barriers, Hollywood and its stars monopolized the picture screens of all the world. in the slow development of the talking picture are Dr. Lee DeForest, Theodore Case, and Earl Sponable, the research staffs of RCA, and Bell Laboratories engineers Donald McKenzie and Edward Wente. Well remembered, too, is the fall of 1927, when the late Sam Warner, using Bell Laboratories equipment, produced the most revolutionary picture in all movie history, a film trademarked Vitaphone, that was to give the screen a new dimension and a new power. I'm coming. Oh, God. I hope I'm not late. Mary, don't you know me? It's a little crazy. I walk a million miles for one of your smiles for my life. With one sound picture, the silent film was forever obsolete. Memorable was the terrifying realism of Universal's All Quiet on the Western Front, greatest of war pictures. Through the talkies, the late Will Rogers was endeared to millions across the world. Well, all I know is what I read in the paper. In Zola, Paul Muni demonstrated the forcefulness with which movies can handle biography. Before France, before the whole world, I swear that Dreyfus is innocent. By my 40 years of work, by all that I have written to spread the spirit of France, I swear that Dreyfus is innocent. May all that melt away. May my name perish if Dreyfus be not innocent. Though U.S. movie makers are often accused of indifference to anything except box office returns, they include many men of great ability and integrity. One among them is Darrell F. Zanuck, long production head of 20th Century Fox, who made his reputation by dramatizing news headlines and such issues as anti-Semitism and the treatment of the insane. In recent years, the British movie industry, given impetus by J. Arthur Rank, has begun to challenge Hollywood's supremacy in world film markets. Sir Lawrence Olivier's screen productions of Shakespeare, counted among the great achievements of the cinema, have brought immense prestige to British films. Let me remember it. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so base. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhood cheap. While then he speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day! Oh, my Lord, Mr. Coyote, 
himself with speed. The French are bravely in their battle set and will with all expedience charge on us. All things are ready if our minds be so. Finish the man whose mind is backward now. Thou dost not wish more help from England, cuz? God's will, my liege. Would you and I alone without more help could fight this battle out? You know your places. God be with you all. <laughs> French producers have little money to work with. They have made some of the finest of recent films, including a lusty adaptation of Ben Jonson's great classic, Valpone. Un simple coup d'œil va vous convaincre. Vous voyez? Tout à fait inerte et rigide. The post-war years in Italy have brought to the fore a whole school of talented new movie makers who, on a shoestring, have produced pictures to rank with the greatest of all time. Today, the motion picture stands on a plane of achievement few could have foreseen half a century ago. What it is to become tomorrow is up to the hundreds of millions of moviegoers throughout the world who each week pass judgment on the most powerful medium of expression ever developed, an art form potentially as great as any in man's history.